record. Hello, everybody. Welcome to Cyverse's Focus Forum webinar. Today's webinar is presented by Leah Wang and Jinwan Liu, who are presenting on using PsyApps to automate and share complex workflows. Um, first, a bit of housekeeping. I'm Tina Lee, Cyverse's user engagement officer, and I organize these, so I welcome any comments you have, as well as uh, suggestions for other webinars you'd like to see. Please be sure to turn on your chat feature, as that's where you'll post any questions that we have uh, for uh, Leah or Jin Wan. And we can, uh, they've allowed us to, to interrupt them during their presentations if um, that's preferred, um, since sometimes we often send, save the questions till the end. Um, today's presentation is about 50 minutes with 10 minutes at the end for Q&A. And all the materials from today will be posted to the wiki page that's up on the chat. Um, give us a little bit to download the video and post-process it, but those things should be available for you to look at and review at any time. So without further ado, I'm going to uh, introduce Leah and Jin Wan, who are both scientific analysts with Cyverse, and they work for Cold Spring Harbor Lab, which is our partner at Cyverse. So welcome, Leah, and welcome, Jin Wan. Thank you, Tina. Hey, uh, everyone. This is Lia Wang. Uh, today, I will talk about Cyapps that we developed at the Cosby Harbor Lab, uh, the science team, including me, Zhen Yuan, and a few others. Uh, this is the first time we're talking about Cyapps, which is the platform that allows you to construct automatic workflows. So I put a lot of lo uh, logos on the first slides. Uh, just to highlight that, the first logo is for Cyapps. It used a Gavi platform to handle you know, all the jobs analysis and use the data common, a data store for handling all the data storage. Um, that's how, you know, Cyverse, the whole infrastructure is built up on top of them. Again, Cyverse is a joint project with three main institutes including Coast Spring Harbor Lab, that's where me and Jin Yuan and a few others work here, and Tech, Texas Advanced Computing Center, and the University of Arizona, which is the headquarters of a Cyverse project. And again, Cyverse is funded by a National Science Foundation for a Cyber Infrastructure Program. This is the outline of the talk. Um, First, I will introduce Cyaps. Uh, as I said, it brings Cyverse workflows to any data and compute, what it means that you can run the same workflow uh, local or on the cloud. The advantage will be it automate all your complex analysis. You don't need manually run each step. And at the end, you can share the entire analysis, which with all the results, intermediate results with others your collaborators if you want. Uh, I will briefly talking about some future plans on SAP's side. First of all, we'll be aware support building um, workflows in a different way than we are doing right now. So right now we are tracking all the job histories and use that to chain it into a workflow. In the future, you will be able to uh, chain all the applications choose together and run that. We call that arbitrary because you don't really know um, each step is w working or not. Um, so it's kind of a risk over there. The second one will be, um, SAPS has been extensively used by the Maze Code Project. It's an in-code project for Maze. Um, some of their developers have been working on developing several workflows, which is in beta uh, version. I will introduce them but later on, all the workflows and the main code data will be shared with the community. Then I will go through a list of uh, workflows that's either public or available or can be shared with you uh, if you send us your iPlan the Cyrus ID. At the end, Jin Yuan will give a live demo, which will be about 20 minutes, uh, show you in everything I cover in my slides. Okay. So what is SciApps? Uh, it's a lightweight workflow platform. By lightweight, I mean it doesn't do everything for you. 
Right. We use Cyber State Store for data management, and we use Agave for job management. What Cyber does is just try to give you a platform that you can put everything together, your data, your analysis, and metadata. It's one platform that allows you to um, organize your data, your analysis. And if you want to redo it, it's much easier uh, with automatic workflow. The advantages will be you can share this, um, including data, apps, workflows, uh, even your storage server and computing system through Cy apps. Uh, but many of you probably will be only interested in workflows, and that's uh, uh, the focus of today's webinar. So another thing you probably didn't realize is Cy apps and Cyworks allow you to uh, handle your data differently. You, want, you can handle it locally. This way, uh, you bring the Cyworks workflow to your local data and the local cluster, so you don't need to uh, move them anywhere. Another way most of our users are using is really put the data in the data store um, and do the computation over there. That's also supported by the Cyworks platform. So as I put in the uh, bolded world, it says Cyworks' main goal is really to bring Cyrus workflows to any data and computer cluster, a mix of both, like local or remote on the cloud. Again, you can interrupt me by typing the question in the chat panel. Okay. So this is probably helpful for you to get an uh, understanding of what is behind the Cyrus. Um, as I said, University of Arizona is the headquarters of the Cyrus project. Then later on, we add tech uh, to the project to utilize the clusters from the XSEED project, um, so funded by the NSF for the XSEED project. Uh, so today, we are going to demo something using the tax stamp 2 cluster at, at the Coast Green Harbor Lab, which is located in New York, Long Island. So we build another system a local system, that's why you see two arrows pointing to CSHL, uh, which means the SIABs actually do a lot of interaction with Arizona and Tech for any job you submitted. But the Cyrus project and SIABs make this possible. Um, you, as an end user, you don't need to worry about all the underlying uh, infrastructure. You just care about getting your data analyzed and retrieve it uh, from the data store. There's another connection, those are the uh, collaborating uh, uh, institutes with the Cyrus project, including RINSI and NASA. So this is what you will see from the Cyrus front page. It's basically another way to draw uh, how things are hooked up together. In the box, in the center of the picture, that's how Cyrus were hooked uh, including workflow engine, a storage server, a computer server, um, and the front end interface allow you to visualize using different tools. The outside the box is really um, how SIAPS leverages cloud resource, including data store, Amazon storage, or other cloud based storage, or you can do your computation on text MP, uh, STMP2, the Amazon EC2. But for Amazon and other commercial cloud, definitely you need, um, you need to pay for them. Uh, for Cyrus and Tech, those are funded by the NSF, so which is ready to use resource for the community. Again, I want to reinforce that the Cyrus workflow can run everywhere. Um, so basically, we do one-time development. Uh, we can provide that to you know, the community with the community cloud. This is another view, uh, if you are interested, by the way, I'll just go through that very briefly. We have two websites. One is called SciApps.org, which basically uses the local cluster and the system we set up at the Cosmic Harbor Lab. On the left side is called de.sciapps.org, which utilizes data store and text MP2, uh, which is a beta version, but it is pretty stable now. Um, we have several workflows run on that that we can share with you. So this is the Cyaps um, 
web interface, uh, in the center I load an app called MLMM for multi locus mixed model association. It's one of the modeling two uh, for GWAS. On the right side, I load the GWAS workflow. Uh, on the left side is the apps. This three panel uh, looks similar to Galaxy, but the main advantage here really is, yeah, you don't need to install your own Galaxy. This, all the workflows and tools are ready to use uh, as long as uh, you can avoid the maintenance window of all the infrastructure used behind the scene. Later on, Jin Yuan will give you a live demo, um, so he will show you how these things work, so I won't uh, spend more time on that. So I organized today's uh, main talk like as steps, uh, really to show you how to use these apps. Uh, there are five uh, basic steps for you to get started. Uh, number one will be to request access to apps. It's a one-time operation. You can do as uh, 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 Cyber's user portal. I have a screenshot later on. Uh, second step will be input your data or upload your data to the side data folder, which is created by the first step automatically with, with all the credit permissions. This folder is used by Cyber's uh, to do all kinds of data management. The third step will be run your analysis. Uh, then you can change them in the first step as a workflow. Then you can run the entire workflow again with, um, if you want to try different parameters or you want to share the same workflow and data with your collaborators. This is a screenshot of the cyber user portal. Uh, if you log in there, again, I, you already put the URL at the bottom of the slides. Uh, that's where you can access this. You will see apps under available services if you haven't enabled it. Uh, you just click on re request access. What will happen will be, apps will be moved from available to my services tab. And the site data folder will be created. The second step, like I said, there's many ways uh, you can add your data to data store. Uh, you probably already know that, but this is just a screenshot of a cyber discovery environment. There's several ways. Uh, you can upload your data to the site data folder. But the discovery environment is for data upload is only good for small data. It's less than 1.9 gigabytes. If, if you really have big data, uh, we already suggest you use CyberDAC if you prefer a GUI um, tool, based tool. Or you can use iCommons, which is uh, developed by the iRoads project. Uh, from the command line, you can use the app code uh, to upload your data. It, it's similar like FTP, but much faster since they utilize some parallel uh, transfer mechanism. Again, you know, there's a wiki tutorial on how to use CyberDark um, in the bottom of the slides. The third step will be run analysis. Uh, here I'm showing you one app called Snap. Uh, it's, it is a gene prediction tool. Uh, in there, I just click on the browse data store, um, which is grayed out uh, in the background. background. Uh, if you click on that, we'll open a browsing window. Over there, you can see four buttons, refresh, go up, example data, and cybers. Uh, if you click on cybers, what you see here is a user called maze code. It has a slide data folder. That's where you put your data there. For here, I will select the uh, gzip uh, annotation file and click on select close. Then I can submit this job. Uh, this job will be running on the cluster. So this I'm showing you for step three, I'm running a second analysis that use the result of snap. What I do will be I will just drag, I click on snap from the history panel. That will expand so you can see the hidden macro model uh, estimation file. You just drag that file to the SNAM HMM file field, then submit this job. It's called Maker uh, for re annotation. It's basically taking uh, the gene prediction results to improve the annotation. So now I have two steps done. I can change them together. I just uh, click on the select box 
um, in the history panel for each job. Then click on the build a workflow link from on the top. That will bring up the workflow building form. Then you can build the workflow. Uh, down there, you see a diagram that will pop up once you click on build a workflow. That basically tell you the relationship between the input and output. Uh, click on each node will also direct you to the file, either input or output. If you click on the uh, app, those are colored in green, means it's completed, will direct you to the uh, documentation of the tool. The last step will be to share or rerun the analysis. Um, on Saps, there is a workflow in the top menu. If you click on that, you will see my workflows, uh, including all the workflows you run, you share, uh, you saved, or somebody shared with you. can save a workflow somebody shared with you. So I have a, a list of many. I'm just showing the top three. Uh, from there, if I select one, uh, I can load them. If somebody okay. shared with you, the second window showing you like you can they share with you with a JSON that you can download from your workflow and pass to another person. Another person can load that as a file or as a URL. You put, if you put the uh, workflow in a, uh, on a web server, right? if you load that, they will see the same thing, the same workflow uh, with the same diagram, but they can run it. When they run it, the bottom diagram is showing that. Uh, the first step is already done, which is in green. The second one is running, which is in blue. But all this is automated. So the user doesn't even care about submitting each job uh, manually. Everything is tracked by the SIPS uh, workflow engine. The SIPS workflow engine will handle the submission of each job once it's ready to run and give you the uh, job status on the diagram or through um, your job page. You can lead see the status of multiple jobs all at once. Leah? Yes. There's a question. Uh -huh. The question is, is the workflow building form the same interface provided by Galaxy, or is it specific to PsyApps? That's, that's a good question. Um, the workflow building form is, um, is different from Sci uh, Galaxy. It's uh, completely different because uh, the backend uh, we are using uh, the Agave API. So that allow us to join uh, the workflow on the tech uh, Stampede cluster. So for Galaxy, you would have to uh, install your own uh, Galaxy Institute. You have many, many things to uh, support. This is ready to use. Uh, the interface looks similar, but uh, the mechanism, uh, everything behind it is different. Thanks for asking. Yeah. There are more things uh, SIAPs can do, um, including some future uh, development. The one is the, like workflow and job management. Uh, as I probably showed you, um, you can uh, do a uh, like share your workflow, uh, share uh, or download that as a JSON to share. Uh, for job, you can actually load the job to the right uh, history panel. Uh, if later on you want to rebuild a workflow from the older jobs. For metadata, uh, the workflow gives you a chance. Uh, the SIAPs give you the, the, to, the platform to, uh, if, you, if you want to add the metadata through DE, for example, or through IROTS, those metadata can be linked to the input file, then the SIPS workflow diagram um, can basically organize all your data together. Um, you know, so if you share your data with somebody, um, they don't need, need to ask you what it is if you describe it very well in the metadata related. Um, number eight is, as I said, we're planning to build the arbitrary workflow um, uh, method, the second method for you to build workflows. Um, number nine will be, um, we provide several workflow templates that's basically based on individual uh, reusable uh, apps. So you can start with that. The way I call it the templates because that's really, everybody wants to customize their own workflow. Uh, we just give you a very complete templates with all the tools you probably use. Uh, need to use, you, then you can pick the one you want to run your analysis. So for workflow and jobs management, uh, here I give you a full screenshot of what we implement 
as I said, for workflows, you can select the one, uh, you can load them, visualize the diagram, download it as a JSON um, to share with others or save for yourself or just delete them. Uh, for jobs, uh, similarly, you can load a job to the history panel for build a workflow later on. Uh, you can refresh uh, if you think your job is done but it's not reflected there, or you can delete the job. For each job, you can see the submit time and end time. Um, the, it's called submit time because, as I said, every time you run a job, there's a lot of uh, communication in the back end um, among Coastal Harbor, Tech, and Arizona. Um, this is what I mean for metadata. Here I'm showing you uh, on the left side, uh, probably you, were, you are already familiar with is the data commons. It's called data commons, which provides a landing page for data you put into the data store. But to make that appear uh, as a URL, you have to set the correct uh, permission on your file. Uh, Cyops was handling that. For example, I'm showing you a simple workflow, a part of the workflow used for chip seek analysis. The input file is a pair, rate, pair and rates um, from Illumina. Then we also pass the Illumina adapter. Now I'm looking at this SO4, this file, if I click on that, which will direct to this landing page with the same name, um, it's the same thing, but on diagram, it's, it's just kind of sharp to make the diagram looks better. Um, you can see here is the metadata associated with the file, with this file. Uh, it's basically telling you um, what is this, what kind of antibody is used, uh, what kind of tissue is, uh, is this, and the bioanalyzer also contains some more information like ZMM16 is telling you this is a maze um, sample. Uh, the more important is like I put a box over there, uh, is a Synapse workflow ID that you can add. That ID tells you if you take this ID and then come back to Synapse, you can bring up the entire workflow uh, which tell you the history of this data. Uh, this data can be analyzed this way. Again, as I said, the diagram here is just for demo is showing you um, many different status of the analysis. Uh, the blue is com uh, running, the uh, green is complete, and the, the orange one is pending uh, because the, the step is depending on still running. And this gives you a, a whole cycle of data management, like from metadata, to analysis, from analysis to metadata. Leah? Yes? Another question. How was that metadata provided for that file? Was it provided by the user when importing? Yeah, that's another good question. The metadata was added by the user. But for the main code project, we automated that. Um, we we <laughs> Simon automated that. The user can go in there. Um, if you look in, at the bottom of the first slides, there is a, a URL um, telling you how to add metadata uh, in the discovery environment. So this metadata was, uh, there's many ways to add metadata. You can do that with DE, uh, that has a graphical user interface, or you can do it through the command line using uh, um, some bulk. If you have a lot of metadata, you can do that automatically. This one, I did it automatically. This is just a proof of concept, and that's a good question. So Synapse does not uh, handle the metadata part for you. It basically gives you a way uh, to chain things together. Uh, we rely on discovery environment or errors or other tools to add the metadata. But Cyborg's project has many supported, has been supported in many different ways to uh, manage your metadata. Like uh, mm, also develop uh, integrated many metadata templates that you can use. As I mentioned earlier, the next one we want to build is really a different way uh, to build workflows. Um, here is different than what we did earlier, saying we run two jobs, then we change them. Uh, the connection between input and output are tracked automatically. Uh, in this way, you basically uh, add a list of apps to a new workflow, then you manually match output to input. We can do some uh, checking, like saying this should be a fast A file, this should be a fast Q file, uh, to tell you your match is not correct. Oh, then you can save the workflow. 
Uh, this is the way that's supported by many platforms. Uh, we didn't do this because we're really worrying about uh, it, didn't, uh, it won't work uh, like you imagine will work. So it's really safe to say you run each step, uh, checking your results, then chain them together. The last one I want to mention is the maze code. Um, Synapse will develop you know, the way how we handle metadata, um, the way we chain things together. It actually makes the ideal platform for supporting a project called maze code. It's an encoder efforts on maze. Uh, in there, they're sequencing uh, about over 400 libraries. Uh, they are also assembling uh, two genomes and sequencing assembly and doing a lot of iron seq chip -seq. Uh, whole genome by software sequencing, MSE, all kinds of analysis. There's a lot of workflows and data to be released. So we are using uh, Synapse to manage all the data, workflow, and the metadata, and to release that uh, through cyber data store. So users from the community can run the same analysis the maze code project used, uh, same workflow on the SAMP uh, cluster. Um, but for maze code, they will be mostly utilizing the code spring harbor cluster that we set up locally to avoid the moving data you know, from data store to tech because that's about 20 to 30 terabytes of data to be analyzed. Then we're talking about the list of workflows. Uh, first, I want to uh, emphasize that you know, we have workflows that runs on SAPS arc. Then we have workflows that runs on de.sapps.org. The same workflow is basically separated because of uh, uh, they are optimized for different things. The sapps.org is optimized for processing local data, uh, like a maze code project, and also good for the community to use it to, when they just have a very small uh, input data, like microbytes, from the cyber state store. This kind of analysis, like uh, GWAS annotation or small genome assembly, uh, this kind of analysis does not have a lot of data uh, that need to be moved up across the country. Those are perfectly fine to run on Cypress Arc. Then for the main code project, those workflow usually involves like 20 to 30 terabytes of data. Uh, we developed something called Steed on Cypress Arc that is scaled well with Cypress Digital and Exit Cluster for the community to rerun the analysis, to use the data, or to run their own data. It's always good for large-scale analysis. Just give you an idea what's the annotation. I mean, here we have a proof of concept annotation. I use maker and snap. I introduced earlier to do three pass uh, annotation of a, a small um, part of the rice genome. Um, then from there, I just want to show you um, from the history panel, you can click on the output that will bring up the genome browser showing you the annotation results and the evidence which that's supporting this annotation. The evidence means everything you passed to the initial annotation, including your EST, uh, your uh, cDNA, those kind of uh, information, or RNA-seq data. You RNA-seq data not directly, but uh, the assembly, the transcripts that you passed to Maker to do your annotation. For small genome assembly, uh, this is a workflow that's developed by the Galaxy project. So we just show that Synapse can in incorporate their workflows, uh, but we need to uh, modify because the platform is different. So we need to modify that, uh, integrate into Synapse uh, and the Cyrus. Uh, so it does like um, the QC with multi-QC, fast QC and multi-QC, then doing assembly with unicycular then doing uh, quantification with the quest and the annotation with the program. This is good for small genome only. Uh, I mean, small, probably less than, uh, genome size should be around uh, less than 500 megabytes. This is, this is the association workflow. Uh, it, the diagram shows like there are several jobs running in parallel because Synapse handles that for you. Um, then the red, a history panel has the output. I click on one of one thing called my Manhattan plot that bring up a, a website the build on Shining that's interactive tell you uh, if you click on the Manhattan plot that will pull the uh, nearby genes from Ensemble and Grimming project um, 
and display them. So it's just a handy tool for you if you're doing GWAS. I give you an idea, you know, to see maybe the, the most significant peak um, near the gene that you are interested to look. Um, again, you need to do more uh, downstream analysis to really uh, confirm that. But this is just give you an idea like how SIAPs can hook everything together. Again, there's a tutorials for this. Um, if, you, if you don't know GWAS, you want to learn that, there's a link uh, uh, on the website. Now I move on to uh, more like a maze code uh, project. Uh, this is the iron -Seq. That's the same uh, pipeline constructed by the uh, human ink for the project. But for them, they, they, they are supported by a platform called DNXers, which, utilize, which is utilizing Amazon Cloud. So you have to pay to do your analysis. Uh, for servers and apps, everything is uh, basically no charge because we are all funded by uh, NSF. So also there's a mass solution. We're still working on that, but this tells you uh, if you use Bismarck, you can do some, um, you can get some mass solution ratios across the genome. This is the last uh, uh, workflow I want to talk about. We're also giving this to users to uh, test it, to run it. Uh, this is the ChIP-seq. Um, it has many, many more steps uh, compared with the one I showed you before. And this is basically only two replicates with two controls. Uh, you see, including uh, read pre-processing and the picarding, the intersection and annotation. Uh, if you do it manually, it will be very tedious. So this is the way we can share this with you. You can run it with your data, or you can modify this workflow. You have three replicates. Um, basically, this simplifies your analysis. Then you can share it with another collaborator if you want. There are a few uh, workflows that's under development by us and by the Maze Code project, including SmartRNA, MSE Seq, ATAC Seq. And again, with Cybers and Cybs, they are open platform. Anybody can develop their own workflows. There's many users from the community that are actually uh, doing the uh, app to integration. And again, all these workflows are constructed with reusable uh, modular apps. So you don't need to do again and again. Once you construct them, you can change them together, like BWA, or Bota, or Star. You can use it again and again to do uh, more workflows construct. So this is a brief summary. I just want to reinforce uh, that Cybers, Cybers is a lightweight uh, workflow platform uh, that uses Cybers data store uh, for data storage and x 72 for compute. It chains uh, modular apps together for automation. Uh, but again, I forgot to mention is that each individual app can also run in discovery environment because it's completely compatible. Um, the workflows can be easily shared uh, via JSON format text file. Um, we can de develop other ways for sharing. For now, I think this is the, uh, we think this is the easiest way to share. I mean, this also that you think about it because once you share a workflow, um, you will be sharing all the data and the metadata with your collaborators. Our workflow can be run on local uh, on cloud systems with very mod, uh, manual modifications. Uh, it's basically try to repointing each app from a local cloud local cluster to a cloud system. Um, that's all it needed. Or you can mix them. The workflow can run have some apps run on local system, some apps run on cloud system. The next thing I want to share with you are really uh, some best practices with uh, when you are using a shared cyber infrastructure. Um, I also run into this thing very often, like first thing will be probably to be aware of maintenance um, of cyber state store, Agave API, uh, Stampy2 cluster. If they are down, this thing won't work because it's built on so many things. Um, but usually when they have a, uh, maintenance, they will have announcement and news. That will be also integrated into SIAPS uh, to help you to see uh, why my job, my workflow is not running. Or we can hold your job until the maintenance is over and submit it for you. Um, the second thing will be always compress your data if possible. Um, like a fast kill file, I would suggest you use gzip or some other compression to, uh, to compress them. First of all, we'll make it easy for you to upload them to a cyber state store that will save some storage space. 
and more importantly, uh, we'll speed up data transfer. Um, for for steps, um, I mentioned that several times the data was copied from a uh, data store to Exceed cluster. That's from Arizona to Texas. If your data is now compressed, the data transfer will take a lot of time. Um, that's where basically crowd the, the internet bandwidth, right? Um, so I would always compress my data uh, if I'm using the platform like this. Last one would be uh, if we are using a shared resource. Um, that's kind of a risk we are developing a workflow platform because that allow you to run many jobs. Um, but I would suggest you to run large scale analysis in off peak times, like weekends, after hours, holidays. Um, those times, nobody, uh, not nobody, it's less load on the system. It's easier for you to get your job completed. Uh, also try not to run too many analysis jobs. I know the workflow is cool. Uh, you can submit 100 workflows with, you know, 1,000 jobs to run, but that will actually take away a lot of shared resource from other people. Um, that's all I want to cover. Uh, thanks a lot for coming to the uh, webinar. Uh, I will take uh, more questions if you have. And again, you can contact uh, us or contact support at Cyberstock uh, if you want to get a workflow shared, if you have more <coughs> questions. Uh, over there, I also list uh, there's a platform guide for SAPs that covers the basic steps uh, and some tutorials for the GWAS and annotation. Okay, thanks again. Um, please stay on the line if you'd like to see a live demo that Zhen Yuan will do. So while we're waiting um, for the shared screen to be uh, transferred, are there any other questions that you want to type into the chat for Leah? Leah, one thing I also thought of in terms of um, the, the data analyses and running things is sometimes people's own institutions, if you're transferring a lot of data or running an app or something, um, your own institution may time you out if it exceeds what their limits are. We've run into that in the past. Yeah, sometimes the institution actually will charge you. Uh, no. You transfer from them. Right. Okay, it looks like Zhen Wan is ready to go. So here you go, Zhen Wan. Hi, uh, I'm Zhen Yuan Lu. Uh, I'm working with Leah on this science uh, project. So I'm right now going to do a live demo on show uh, using the uh, descipes.org. So this one is using the uh, Cyber's data store uh, as the storage. Um, so everything will be uh, <coughs> likely take the data from the Cyber's data store and then after the job finished, all the data will uh, archive back to the, the Cyber's data store. So if you have not uh, <coughs> request access, you need to, if, if you want to use uh, uh, Cyber's, you, you will need to go to the cyber user portal, go to the available to request the, the CIPS, uh, uh access. Uh, after that, you are <coughs> in the DE, you can see there will be a signed data folder created uh, uh, under your name. And then uh, all the results of the each job will save into the side, uh, side data results folder. And then, uh, I normally just create a, another folder to store the the your your uh, the the input data. <clears throat> so I have already loaded some uh, testing data in my uh, uh, side data uh, sign data um, <clears throat> folders. So I will just also just run the. Oh, okay, I will first log in. Use my credential here. <clears throat> So after, uh, after logging, so uh, we have already uh, um, organized some uh, public data into different category, um, and and also uh, load all the your uh, Agave apps, your private apps available there. So I will uh, just run the snap uh, as uh, Leah showed before. So after you click. Click it will give you a full 
basically <coughs> I can try to browse my data store. Here is my um, uh, Sci, Sci Apps data store home. I'll go to the data to load the uh, annotation as the input, then select close. I will just submit the job. I will confirm the job. I want to click submit. Then it will take some time to uh, communicate with the Agave and then <coughs> uh, to confirm the job is submitted uh, successfully. It will, uh, after that, it will turn, uh, it, it will not be uh, grayed out. So right now it's uh, submit is uh, successful. You, will, you can check the job information. It says the job ID, uh, it's pending when it's submitted. <coughs> So I will. Uh, so I will just uh, for the demo. I will just load the one I have or, or already run before, and then use that to to change the the next uh, job I want to to work together to uh, build our workflow. So next one we are going to search for maker. Okay. It's not the one. <coughs> just jobs uh, maker. Just load it. Okay. <coughs> Seems like we have some problem too. Okay, let me just uh, reload it. Okay, the job is still there. Trying to find the maker. Okay. Still not loading. Anyway, I will just uh, load the one I have. Uh, so, uh, so I have a problem. I will just use this one. Seems like I have some problem there. Okay. Okay. So this one works okay. Okay. <clears throat> uh, so here I, I will just show uh, actually uh, uh, I actually, I loaded the workflow um, installed, uh, is saved before. I will just uh, show how to uh, using the, the, the job. If you have job is uh, uh, in your history, you can select uh, that the job has been um, run. So you can build a workflow. So suppose you want to chain these three together. So they are, has already, they have the, uh, interconnection between them. So basically, Maker generated the, the 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 annotation, and then going to the Snap, and then Snap predict the uh, gene model, and then rerun the Maker to to build a better gene model. So uh, uh, if you use that, you you can uh, build a workflow. Then you can save your workflow to any um, name you would like to use. Okay, it's been saved. So <clears throat> also you can, uh, so also you can use the, uh, uh, the, your existing workflow and then you can, based on that to run uh, further, um, uh, jobs and then build a larger 
workflow like uh, uh, Leah showed uh, in as that uh, chip seek data uh, workflows. So it's uh, okay. It's a large workflow. So basically, uh, we we are building the workflow like in in one in one lab, and then we repeat each uh, several times, and then we uh, use all the um, uh, jobs, and then build a bigger workflow uh, for for this purpose. So this is I would like to. Uh, Show in this uh, live demo. Seems like in the the uh, uh, the uh, site there that has some problem to loading the the apps. But uh, so we are uh, so I'm switch back to the sites uh, site to to show you guys. Uh, that's all uh, I would like to show uh, in the live demo. If you have uh, any any questions, uh, please feel free to. Uh, uh, Ask here, or if you have uh, more question, you you can communicate with us through email. So I will just uh, complete my demo here. Thank you very much. So. Are there questions for Jen Wan? Thank you, Jen Wan. Um. I guess I had a question. I'm not sure if there, it looked like there was an option to make either use public workflows that were already shared or to make yours public. Are you able to demonstrate that on your? So, so right now, um, um, there's a no uh, automatic system to uh, kind of uh, directly through the SIPs. A website to directly promote your job as public uh, directly, but you can communicate with us to help you to do that. Okay. Yeah. So you would you would email support and ask to do that. Yeah. Yes, Tina. <coughs> um, so right now, that's now that's a and the planning we will be developing that. Uh, uh, so say for example for the maze code project. Uh, a lot of workflows need to be made public, those which cannot be done manually. So we just need to develop a function to, be, to label a workflow as public, but still you need to contact the support to mark your workflow as public. Okay, thank you. Uh, there's another question. Can users import workflows from a Galaxy instance? Um, the, the short answer is uh, no. Uh, the reason behind that is really uh, Galaxy and other workflow platform, they, they don't really handle uh, the, the complicated uh, underlying hardware. For example, uh, when we submit the job to uh, SNMP, we actually need to tell the, uh, the cluster uh, how, how much memory, how many CPU, how long I will run, those kind of information are not uh, supported even by the common workflow language. Um, those, you know, uh, Galaxy and many others adopt that. So what they have, um, I will say, is just a subset of what we're developing. Um, you can easily convert their workflow, but directly importing uh, is not a, um, it will not work simply because they lack those information to configure the hardware. Thanks, Leah. All right. If there are no other questions, um, and you know, if there are, be you're always welcome to email uh, support with your questions or to go to our uh, forum called ask.cyverse.org. Um, I'd like to thank Leah and Jen Wan for a really good webinar presentation. As I said, we'll post those to the wiki page that's upload or that's. Uh, there on the chat and I would like to invite you to our next webinar which is February 9th which will be on iMicrobe streamlining cybers resources for microbial omics research and that's going to be given by Bonnie Hurwitz who is the PI of that project um, so I'll put that information on the chat there 
Um, any other questions? You've got an, a captive uh, presenter audience here, so <laughs> feel free to, to ask. I'm sorry we have to use the, the type, the chat function. Um, our current webinar does not allow for attendees to actually talk, but um, we're happy to respond to any questions you may have. Okay, well, if there's no other questions, thank you very much. As I said, we'll post this information to the wiki page in the next day or two. Thank you, everybody. Thank you, Mike.